the purpose of this video is to address the question of Gibbs sampling. And it is yet another example of a random walk, Markov chain, Monte Carlo algorithm. We've already seen two. The first was a politician. And secondly, the Metropolis algorithm applied to theta, the Bernoulli binomial parameter for a binary variable. And one of the reasons for doing Gibbs sampling is that it's more efficient if you have more than one parameter for example, more than one parameter theta. And so if we're thinking about more than one parameters, then we're going to have to think about joint distributions. So for example, we had two coins, each of which might have a different parameter theta. In other words, we'd have theta one and theta two then the way that we would have to express Bayes' theorem is that what we'd be interested in would be the joint posterior distribution of theta 1 and theta 2 given the data, and that's going to be equal to the likelihood function, which is now going to be the probability of the data given the joint probability of theta 1 and theta 2 multiplied by the prior probability of the joint, theta 1 and theta 2, all which is then divided by the marginal probability of the data. We can just represent that as a little d. That. So, to help get our heads around this idea of joint distributions, Krischke has a really nice figure. Figure 75 on page 167. And I really encourage you to spend some time staring at this figure and reading his description of this figure. Again, to understand, become comfortable with the idea of a joint distribution. So let's look at his figure 7.5. So, we're going to have our prior joint distribution, and that's shown here. So, there is theta 1 on this axis, theta 2 on this axis. He's using grid approximation in this figure. And remember, when I talked about grid approximation, I said it was going to be really helpful for understanding Bayesian data analysis, even though in practice it wasn't what we're going to use. So now we're going to see how grid approximation is going to help us with understanding. So we got this very fine grid for theta 1, very fine thin grid for theta 2, and what do we have on this axis? What we have on this axis is this thing, the joint probability of theta 1 and theta 2. And then we go to this panel, very fine grid of theta 1 and theta 2. And what we have on this axis, this is the likelihood function. So we have on that axis is this, our likelihood function. And then what we do is we multiply to get the posterior. So you can take this little point here, value of theta 1, theta 2, multiply it by this little point here, theta 1, theta 2, and get the corresponding value here of theta 1 and theta 2. So you do that a huge number of times, and what you get is the product. 
So the product is what you would initially get if you multiplied the prior by the likelihood. But to get the posterior, of course, you need to divide by the marginal probability of the data. Now, in practice, that's pretty tough, but since we're using grid approximation, it isn't that difficult because all you got to do is add up all these joints. That gives you, because we, as we've seen many times, the sum of all the joints is equal to the marginal probability of the data. Just get that division, and that will give you ultimately, once you divide it by probability of the data, will give you the posterior distribution, which is what we're interested in. And down here, you see each one of these shown as a contour plot. And again, it's worthwhile spending some time looking at Kushki's figure to see the relationship between these three-dimensional and the contour plots. So now we can start to think about how this Gibbs sampling is actually going to work. And so I'm going to use an example where I'm going to assume that we have three coins. And they're potentially going to have three different values of theta, theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3, because they're made by Acme coin makers, and they don't necessarily make all their coins with a probability of 50% coming up heads. And so what we're interested in is the joint, the joint distribution of these three values of theta. So again, if we think about the way this is going to work in the context of Bayes' theorem, what we're interested in ultimately is the joint probability of theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, given the data. And that's going to be equal to the likelihood function, which is going to be the probability of data given theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, multiplied by the prior joint distribution of theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. Divided by the marginal probability of the data. So that's what we're going to do. But of course, you know, there's no way we're going to be able to calculate that if we're not using grid approximation. So you want some sort of automated random walk. So our goal is the random walk Markov chain Monte Carlo solution to this which in this case is going to be attained through Gibbs sampling that I'm going to describe in a moment such that we don't need to worry about the denominator. Okay, so how is this actually going to work? Well, in order to be able to make this work, we have to be able to calculate something. We have to be able to calculate conditional probabilities. In particular, we need to be able to calculate the conditional probability of theta 1 given theta 2, theta 3, and the data. And we also need to be able to calculate the conditional probability of theta 2 given theta 1, theta 3, and the data. And also the conditional probability of theta 3 given theta 1, theta 2, and the data. Now, for me, I mean, I just, I just do not understand this. I don't, I don't understand how we have the ability to calculate this. But, in your notes, it's addressed, and there's some supplementary material that's also available on E-Class that will help deal with some of the, the questionableness about the ability to calculate these conditional probabilities. But let's just assume that we can. So assuming that these things can be calculated, the way we're going to proceed is we're going to start off with an initial series of, of joints. So we're going to start off with value of theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. And these are the initial values. So I'm going to index them here as 1, 1, and 1, 
and point out that what we have here is a process of initialization. And this is going to be important when we start to think about actually doing JAGs next week, is that the process of initialization is a very different process from specifying the prior. And of the two, specifying the prior is going to be more important. But what's going to happen is, if we're able to do these sorts of calculations, then we can begin by calculating the conditional probability of theta 1 given, and I'm going to index that with a 2, So, we're going to come up with a new value of theta 1 given the initialized values of theta 2, theta 3 in the data. And then we're going to take what we now have, this new value of theta 1, and we're going to use that to calculate a new value of theta 2 given what we just got, what we've already got, in the data, and then finally, we can get a new value of theta 3, we represent it like that, the 2 indicating that it's new value, based on we got the new value of theta 1, and what we just got here, new value of theta 2, and the data, and once we've got that, for this one iteration, we've got a joint of theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. And we just repeat this thousands of times. And what we wind up with is the posterior distribution, except now we're going to have not just two values of theta, we're going to have multiple values of theta. So, this is just an example of Gibbs sampling, which is just another example of Markov chain, Monte Carlo, random walk, that is particularly relevant when we're dealing with more than one parameter.